By Brothers Keeper is a story we told earlier this year about some courageous Europeans who risked their lives during World War II to save their friends and neighbors, and in some cases, total strangers. The people they saved were Jews. The people who risked their lives to save them were Christians, Protestants and Catholics, Christians of every denomination. It's a story we frankly didn't know too much about until we met a man who is determined the whole world should know this story. His name is Harold Schulweis, Rabbi Harold Schulweis of Los Angeles. He tells Jewish congregations that it's not true that nobody cared and that when people read about the Holocaust generations from now, they should know there was what he called a spark in that darkness. 50,000 Bulgarian Jews were saved from torture and from extermination. Why don't your children know this? Why should they only remember Himmler and Eichmann and Klaus Barbie and not one of them ever know the names of the people who rescued Anne Frank and the families? For over 25 years, Rabbi Harold Schulweis has stood before Jewish audiences like this one outside Philadelphia, preaching that message. Some of you are saying, you know, all of this is going to uh, mitigate the darkness of the Holocaust. I want you to know, number one, there are no heroes without villains. I want my children to know the entire story. They must know about the sadists and the torturers of innocence. But I want them equally to know Alex and Mila Roslin. Alex and Mila Roslin live their lives unnoticed in a Florida retirement home. Two very simple people who once did something extraordinary. It was 1943 in Warsaw, Poland. Thousands of Jewish children were living their lives unnoticed in the ghetto. As a Christian, Alex was banned from the ghetto, but a friend snuck him in to see the children. There were so many children uh, on a sidewalk, sedan, tired, dying, and they come to me and the minister help. They, they know, the help just come from outside. And not kiss my hands, kiss my jacket. And for me, it was a surprise. Nobody interested about the children. Nobody Even was interested? Nobody interested there. It's like, like, it's nothing. That night, Alex and Mella decided to rescue a Jewish child. It turned out to be nine-year-old Jacob Gilot. His aunt Anka had heard of the stranger who offered to hide a child. Anka said, go to him. And he bent, hugged me, exchanged a few words with Anka, and said, let's go. She kissed me, I think, and we took my hand, like, well, uh, father and son, or uncle, uncle and nephew, and so on, and we walked together off uh, towards his apartment. I was scared because today he was so, he looked so Jewish child. Everybody will be no Jewish child. But, uh, okay, I know, uh, if, if I do something, no go back. I say, what's your name? He said, Jacob. I say, Jacob, no Jacob anymore. I have my brother's son exactly like you, exactly like you, Genek. I give you Genek name. Jacob was soon joined by his younger brothers, Shalom and David. The Roslin's own daughter, Mary, was eight years old when the boys arrived. It was not just hiding Jewish children. They became our family. And my father's spirit was never broken. I mean, we left so many homes because as soon as uh, we felt like uh, that uh, we might be found out, we would leave all our possessions and go to another apartment. When Jacob became very ill and needed an operation, Alex Roslin sold the family's apartment to pay for it. But there was nothing he could do to save Shalom. He died of scarlet fever. And Jacob remembers that for a little Jewish boy, there could be no proper burial. And I just put him in a basket and buried him in the cellar because he, he was a kid who didn't exist. If we were found out that, we, that my parents were um, hiding uh, Jewish children, 
Oh, I knew that I would be hanged on the balcony. How did you know that? Well, we knew that we saw many children being hung on balconies and the families. And uh, you that was the, saw? yes, that was the consequence of uh, saving Jewish children, that the children of the Gentile family would be uh, hung on balconies, and then the parents, and for all to see. So your father knew that yes. risk when he took in we Jacob all knew and that, his right. Knowing that, Alex, why would you risk it? If I succeed this, I will feel so happy. The danger was not danger like the field happiness. I think if I, if I succeed this, I will be so happy all my life. Alex did succeed. This photo of him and his two Jewish sons was taken right after the war. Another photo taken right after the war, Anna Pulhoski and the young Jewish boy she saved, Felix Zanman. And uh, because of her, not only I am alive, but she saved in, five, in fact seven people. Five people throughout the war, and two people for uh, about a week or ten days in addition to that. And then once I made a count, I think we are about 45 today, something like that. Oh, I through mean, children. Through children and, and grandchildren and, and things like that. All because of Mrs. Pulaski. That's right, just one person. For 500 days, Felix Zanman, his uncle, and a Jewish couple lived in a hole they had dug under the bedroom floor in the Pulaski home five and a half by four feet and just three and a half feet high. Did you feel in, in, in any way that you were almost digging your own grave? That... It looked like that. Yeah. When you stepped into that, it was like a, dra a grave. Zan Man went into that hole when he was 15 and came out when he was 17. Yet he says it was more civilized down there than in the world from which he'd escaped. From the beginning, my uncle said, look, we could be here for quite a time. We don't know for how long. That we have to have rules and regulations and how to do and so on. For example, there was a preferred place where to sleep that everybody would In that get hole, it. there was yes. actually a preferred it place? It was a place which was warmer than the other. Huh. Okay, so everybody wanted to be there. So he said every three hours change, things like that. We did not fight even once. There was no quarrels whatsoever. And no quarrels in the hole? Not quarrels whatsoever. We came out sane and we were friends until today. Anna Pulhoski's daughter Sabina was one of five children who lived in the house over the hole. She says her mother helped Felix because she had known the boy's family before the war and they had been kind to her. Every day the teenage girl would lower food to Felix and haul up the waste in a bucket. Every day she feared her family would be caught. But for her mother, Hiding Jews was the Catholic thing to do. Anna Polhoski kept her fears well hidden. They're very simple people with good heart. After the war, Felix Zaman became an engineer and physicist, and today runs his own company with 9,000 employees. David Gilot grew up to be a mathematician and now lives in Israel. Jacob Gilot is a nuclear physicist, also living in Israel. It would seem fate led Rabbi Shulweis to one particular man among the rescued. Three years ago, he realized he needed backing to help with his mission. He turned to the Anti-Defamation League and its leader, Abe Foxman. Foxman, it turns out, was himself rescued by a Christian woman when just an infant in Poland. Foxman made Schulweis's organization, the Jewish Foundation for Christian Rescuers, a part of the ADL. Today, the foundation searches out Christians who had the courage to care and tries to thank them in any way possible, from financial help to simple friendship. This Jewish volunteer spends frequent afternoons with an elderly Christian woman because she says she wants to recognize goodness. 47 years ago in the Ukraine, the elderly woman hid 13 Jews in her attic. Whenever you come, you prolong my life. Ah. The sign is shining to my window and yeah. you get in. A really pretty day. The Jewish right. Foundation hopes to use rescuer stories to teach moral values to everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. 
Schulweiss believes we have a moral obligation not to forget them. In honor of Anna and Jan Pulchalski, who in spite of enormous risk sheltered Jews fleeing from the Nazis, with enduring gratitude and admiration, the Anti-Defamation League of Nebrith presents this Courage to Care Award, November 4, 1989. I think they're ordinary people who did extraordinary things. Why should these people, who not only risked their lives, but their reputations and their positions, why should these people be buried in footnotes or simply forgotten? <laughs>